Hi, this is Sean. Hi. Um, today <laughs> we want to talk 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 um about the book The Giver that I recently read and I thought was very inspiring to me. Very interestingly, Sean happened to read it in middle school, and here we are. Okay, I believe many of you might have read the book, and let's do a recap about it. Well, this is a dystopian fiction, and we have the protagonist Jonas, who lives in a family unit with his assigned mother and his assigned father, and he also has a sister named Lily. And then, because they're living in this sort of very organized society where there's everything is completely the same and equal, like, and they weren't able to see colors at the beginning. And as they grew up, like all of the children needed to be assigned to a specific job. And that's done by the elders of the community observing their behaviors from day to day. And on that day of assignment, but they were like 16. 16 of what? Uh, of years of age. Oh, yes. I think okay. around that. Yes, and like it is also very interesting that their age, like they are not caught by like their formal name. Sometimes they're sort of like that 16 or that 15 or that 9. Like they're just referred to by their age. And mm. it sort of lacks individuality as the main theme of the book. Anyway, like at the at the age of thirteen or so, they were like assigned a job. Each of the thirteens were was assigned a job and like Jonas wasn't assigned one, but he was selected as the receiver of memory. What is the receiver of memory? It's like um <laughs> like since everybody kind of like forgot about colors and, and you know wonderful stuff um there has to be a person that kind of like preserves all the cape like knowledge of humanity and that kind of job is just assigned to as you know the giver and the giver is mainly called giver because he kind of like transmits these um memories to the next generation and jonas was picked to be like the heir of the giver um and so um, when he, he, he then like kind of like started to train with the old giver who, um, you know, he's just kind of, cause he's like a wise person cause he, you know, he has experiences that other people don't. Um, I think at first he didn't, he wasn't really, he, he didn't, he couldn't really like accept much memories, especially because he was, um, exposed to real joy, real pain, um, real emotions. And, um, that was kind of overwhelming. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And as Jonas received one piece of memory after another, he sort of had a more comprehensive and diverse view of, this, of the world around him. And like, as these memory accumulated, um, he sort of became aware of how things could be changed. And that's when he decided to like, discuss about how to change the current situation or how to flee the 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 community that he's <laughs> living in with the giver so like they had this um, secret conversation and secret plan about how to get out of this place and how to make some real changes to make everybody like have the memory of all the joyful things in life so they made a very detailed plan to escape but actually when when the date per, when the date came the plan wasn't exactly following what they expected as a result jonas had to flee on his own without the help of the giver so basically he brought his um he brought his baby sister no baby brother that was like sort of the illegal baby brother living in his house and they flee fled so that is some <laughs> really beautiful music. Yes, after they fled there, they went on this way of all the s sceneries around them. And um, as they like moved further and further away from the, um, from the community, they started to experience snow. 
cold, the uh, very co coldness, <laughs> and like all sorts of extreme weathers, as well as things that they haven't seen before. For example, birds or other kinds of animals. And finally, the book ended in a very, very vague way. That okay. I think you need to paint this in like kind of like a more neutral sense. Okay. In that, like he. The scene changed to like a scene that was snowing, and he kind of like mm, slid down a small hill into like a Christmassy place, um, into like the hugs of people. Yes. And yeah, and so that that was kind of weird and unique. Um, and I guess that's the first thing that Brianna wants to talk about. Yes, the ending was like not very clear as how he ended up at the place that like about sliding down the hill and meeting all of these um, welcoming people and the beautiful music. So like on online, like all the readers, they are sort of having two sides of the opinion towards the ending. Some of them said that Jonas actually died at the time and that he was sort of seeing all his memories of all the beautiful memories in his mind. While the other side was saying, saying that like he actually reached a place of all this beauty and joy after all of his like efforts and stuff. And he finally get rid of, got rid of the old community and went to another new place that was like very bright and full of joy and stuff. Yeah, and I guess Sean is a firm believer in the first <laughs> perspective. Okay, I, I, I like, I derive this from a, a number of literary works. I mean, you, can't, you can't really say it's literary, it's just like pop fiction. Um, if you look at Divergent, um, outside of Chicago, there is this um, just barren, friggin' barren place um, it, it's like kind of like on Mars where um, people like there are no living things and or, or water and but outside there's like this controlling entity that um, is really malicious I guess um, that's kind of like controlling the city of Chicago right that's one theory but then if you look at like um, what is it called like the, the people running out of the maze the maze runners yes yeah if you look at the maze runners a lot of people like when you go out like of the maze people are dead um there's a constant state of war so they kind of like even forgot that people were in the maze and when you look at other types of works it, there isn't like a beautiful scene immediately outside of you know the center of the city right and and that is and you know it's it, when you think you think it, like through it's it's logical because if people are so loving on the outside why not make their presence known um why kind of like um not tell people that people existed um because humans are essentially not individual um they are a society based on connections and thus um as a civilization as a kind of like part of a family um, that Jonas was kind of welcomed into they would have like reached out to um other people um in the area and if they were truly like um kind of like that nice um that wouldn't have happened so there are two like theories one is that they are just really controlling and very um dangerous people that have known that jonas will escape that's that's kind of like a stretch <coughs> but more um, the the um, stronger argument is that he kind of just died, and um, the thing was his dream, because you know you know it doesn't really kind of piece together th this kind of like memories or, or, or theories and, and stuff. Wow, I have never thought about like how it was. The book is similar to The Maze Runner or Divergent. Like I too read <laughs> the two like two set of books. And yeah, that that was a really interesting connection. Mm -hmm. 
I originally, I originally thought that maybe they really entered a new place instead of dying right there in the extreme coldness, because well, that is that is a very beautiful memory, and um, there are like other works that is showing that people living in the dystopian world, um, successful successively escaping the community that they're living and finally going into another brand new place that is full of freedom and joy for example anthem like this is a book by iron iron brand where like the two main characters they were they both had very um progressive ideas in their mind instead of being fully controlled by the society leaders and after their effort they finally got out of this place into um um strange wood and like they built their own house there and was living away from all the control at the place like from this sense this is also another work that is supporting the second theory of how the book ended yes the second theory is that it's good yes okay but if you think about it if you really want to buy into conspiracy theories um for for you folks out there um <laughs> This could be an educational movie um, for people like, OK, so maybe, um, you know, the place that Jonas was in was liberated and become like a free, free country. And this, this movie um, came out to celebrate their um, escape into freedom and individuality. Um, however, um, you know, um, again, there was like this autonomous and controlling dictator that again, um, kind of like reformed Jonas's like dystopian society and this movie thus became banned and maybe that's the society we live in now wow <laughs> wow conspiracy theory okay okay <laughs> at the age of 13 every member of the society would be assigned to a job and it seems that one job it's like one person would be only assigned to one job and one job wouldn't have two people working for it. As a result, there was sort of for one age group, there would only be one birth mother, one some sort of <laughs> um, some sort of teacher, one farmer and stuff. And this makes us wonder like whether the society is actually self-sustainable. You learn economics, right? Yes. Yes. So the world is essentially assuming that there is no scarcity, which doesn't make sense. Yes, I agree. Um, but like a birth mother, that isn't as ridiculous as it sounds because they make babies out of like cells and, and stuff, not not out of the womb. So um, that kind of makes sense. Um, when it comes to teachers, it makes more sense because like, you know, look at the lectures at I don't know, like, I don't know, New York University. We, we, University of New York? New and York University. New York University, yes. that sounds, okay. And like, you know, these like 200 people lectures, and that's like possible. But then when you look at more um, demanding and necessary, um, you know, not to diminish any job, but um, farmers, um, if, you, if you have one person to farm, the place and and, <laughs> and to sustain the uh, the economy with food that's just not reasonable yes as a student of econ okay here's some intelligent thought by shot <laughs> yeah it's well i just guess it is it is assumed that in this society like there isn't a concept called scarcity everybody like the resource is not limited it's endless endless <laughs> and um yeah that's some thought over here yes endless yes okay <laughs> well like you know who gabriel is no gabriel like the baby boy that jonas okay. took with him okay. on his Okay. okay, and like, um, it is mentioned in the novel that both of like both of their eyes looked strikingly similar to each other, okay. and they all had this sort of the piercing sensation that may indicate the sort of the ability to see beyond, and this makes me wonder if it is possible that 
their birth mother is the same. Uh, wait. Don't they kind of make babies themselves? No, they don't. Like, they have the birth mother, and, like... No, birth mother is, like, kind of, like, nurturing them. No, it's not. Birth mother is just responsible for giving birth to new babies. That doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense <clears throat> to me either. I, hopefully that is the case, <laughs> and I didn't misunderstand it. Uh, because if it is the case, then it seems that every birth mother is, like, is responsible for making many, many babies. And that just sort of... It's very weird. I, that would that wouldn't work well in modern society. Nah. And yeah. In that case, well, there is a birth mother. Do we have like the birth father or something? There has to be a birth father. Mm. It does. You don't like. You could just collect sperms. Yeah, that is also. If bad. if okay, okay, I'm not gonna paint a scene here, but but it, fathers are not necessary okay sure well like um since they had very similar eyes it just made me wonder if if it is possible that their birth mother is the same and like um even though the society has sort of replaced the system of family related by blood and re um, replace it by like family units that is like mm. that is just pieced up by their observation and what they think was suitable for each family. I wonder, like, sort of, after all their effort, finally, like, G Gabriel and Jonas still ended up in the same family. That is somehow ironic. Yes. All right. Okay, maybe they have, like, this kind of underground society kind of nurturing givers in, in a family, maybe. But okay, I'm just going real strong on the conspiracy theories today. <laughs> well, family units. I personally believe this is a very strange concept in the community of the giver. Yes. Yes. I mean, like, how come a, a, a strange man and a strange woman are just selected and piece up together as a couple and they're like they are sort of giving um giving care to the child that we received from the elders and then sort of after the child became like adults or they sort of went into their respective jobs then the parents became useless and they simply go away and the family was broken that makes sense and after that, when the family, like when the parents had lost their ability or became too old to work on their workplaces, they're <coughs> sent into the place for the elders and finally released. Released. Yes, released. Uh, like what, what don't you think makes sense? Well, we... Like, okay, I, I, I can I can understand that this is probably what would happen in a dystopian society. It's it's when, when people talk about a utopian society yes. or a dystopian society, it's like quite simultaneously both every time. Okay. Would you call like the people in divergent? Would, would you that call that a dystopian or a utopian society? That is a very good it's point. both. Yes. Okay. Um, you know, with the giver, like some people would like to live in that place with no mm. scarcity and stuff. Yes. Yes. Okay. Then it seems that it makes sense. Yes. The whole process of family units and stuff. Okay. Wait, whoa, whoa. That sounds very cold hearted. <laughs> I was like trying to be like the one that's kind of like cold-hearted and then you could like bring it back to like a more positive note well okay i guess i have nothing more <laughs> to say on this topic okay yeah um sean's emotions sean's face just lit up about um release <laughs> <laughs> say something <laughs> no, i don't I don't like 
Hmm. I. It. It's really controversial, but it makes sense. It's efficient. When, when you can't get anything off of a person, right? It, in a very socio, social, like effective way, um, when you only think about effectiveness and output and stuff, it makes sense. It's a less, it's one less mouth to feed. But, like. Everybody believed that when old people became too old, they would be released in the sense that they would be released to another place, go to another community or stuff, instead of like being injected and killed. I guess that's what the majority of people in that community believed. And I don't even think like since um, Jonas's father, Jonas's father is a nurturer. I don't really think he himself knew what he was doing. Brainwash. Yes. Very but important in every society and every form of government. I wonder if, like, they, if Jonas's father knew that he was killing somebody. Like. I think. I don't think he do does or he doesn't know. I don't think he will. Beautiful music again, guys. <laughs> That's like a bonus for, for looking at this video. <laughs> okay. two, two shows us at once. Well, I was very shocked about that release wasn't releasing people outside the community. Like what? What? what okay. What alternative? Is, like okay. So you you got your hands on a bunch of senior citizens. What do you do with them if you want to release them? What's release the logic them. thing to do? Like logical thing to do? Set them into like the forest. Like, here, here's some bread and stuff. Go. Well, everybody like every old, um, every old person in the community was like in the emotion of I am really looking forward to my release. Brainwash. Very important to <laughs> every kind of government possible. Okay. Yeah. But like in a on a more positive note, I think it would be possible like if they are too old to function, they can be released to some sort of each place mm. where they can le live peacefully with all the flowers, the rivers, the beautiful sceneries, the food and stuff. When you look at the movie, isn't that what that is? I didn't finish it. Wow. <laughs> wow. Is that what it is? No, like when you look at the perfect society, don't they have rivers? Don't they have like trees and, and stuff? Uh -huh. That is your your place. And? And, and 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 so you're kind of releasing them from an already perfect place to another perfect place. That doesn't make sense. Oh, yes. That's my point. And and when you have like something like that perfection, if you change it, it's it goes downhill. Oh, yeah. Kind of. Yes. Very insightful. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, do you have anything else you want to talk about? I. I. Uh, <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Interesting. 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 Well. I just think. Maybe it could be applied in our society as well. Go ahead. It's it's manageable. Uh -huh. People don't go crazy. There are no rebellions or, or stuff. That's what a government wants. Peacefulness. Yes. How come they don't have rebellions? They don't do that. Because 
of brainwash. Brainwash. Okay, today's important concept, brainwash. <laughs> brainwash, brainwash, it's brainwash. This should not be a really negative video. <laughs> <laughs> but, but valuable lesson, guys. Okay, yeah. I think that would be the end of this video. Mm. Thank you very much, Sean, for um, joining this video. Like and subscribe and comment down below. <laughs> so professional. <laughs>